Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cattle Parish Commission special meeting on today, July 18th, 2019. At this time, we'll have roll call, Mr. Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Dominic. Present. Lyndon Johnson. Present. Jackson. Lynn. Present. Bowman. Cawthorn. Present. Gage Watts. Present. Middleton. Here. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Here, sir. Smith. Present. Lewis Johnson. We have a quorum. Thank you. <laughs> And let the record reflect, Mr. Johnson called and he'll be about 10 minutes late, so he's on his way. At this time, we will ask you to silence your cell phones and we'll have our invocation by Commissioner Jim Smith and we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Mike Middleton. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we pause asking your blessing upon our meeting today, Father. Father, we just ask mostly that everything we do will be in accordance with your will bring honor and glory to our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in his name I pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please face the flag of the United States, render the proper salute, and recite with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, for the nation and under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And all. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move to agenda additions. I have none, sir. Yes. Yeah. I think we have one. Just you have one, Commissioner? Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, move that we um, add to our agenda for visitors uh, Mr. Um, Andrew Larson and um, Wendy Ben Scott from the uh, Every Man of King Distillery. I hope I pronounced their names correct. And Shelly Ray, I believe. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to add to our uh, agenda, expand the agenda. First, we need to vote on expanding the agenda. Public hearing. Oh. Do we need to do a public hearing? Yeah, yeah, we have a public hearing first. Anybody speak on for or against expanding the agenda? Okay. You're done, Commissioner Jackson? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I make an addition? Okay. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Well, um, are they on the. I remember Mr. Lars, he was supposed to be here the other day. Remember? Right, correct. So it just be, is, she, is she with him or is it a Correct. They're they're right? No, he, they're right. she, they're, they're right together? There. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure one, two Yes, seven, one, group. <coughs> one group. That's it? That's all I have. Okay. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Uh, I'm going to agree with that. Can we move it to uh, right after uh, citizens' comments instead of adding to the last of the agenda? Um, I think we have to expand have it the, first, then yes, do that. Yes, once okay. we can do that, if you would like to get back on the board for a motion after that, then you can. Okay. 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 At this time, is there anyone here to speak in favor expanding the agenda? 
Is there anyone here to speak against it? Okay, I see none. I declare this public hearing closed on expanding the agenda. Now at this time, we'll vote on expanding the agenda. Okay, and that passes 10-0. So now we would need to vote to put uh, visitors after citizen comments. Okay. So moved. And Commissioner Second. Middleton is already, Second. that's your motion, right? Yes. All right, second by the chair. Please vote. Okay, and that passes 10-0. Next, we move to citizen comments. Okay. Citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and forward it to the president or the clerk of the commission. Comments by any citizen will be limited to three minutes. I have two cards. I have Ms. Sharon Johnson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have three minutes. Okay. I'm Sharon Johnson. I reside at 3102 Country Club Drive here in Shreveport. I am here today to uh, thank, uh, formally thank the commission on behalf of Roosevelt Collins, who is a native Shreveport, <laughs> uh, played in the NFL, graduated Booker T. Washington High School. <coughs> Mr. Collins does a um, youth camp here in Shreveport every year. This is the third year. And this year we had the support of the commission as well as SPAR. Uh, you guys provided meals for the kids. And on behalf of my entire staff, including Mr. Collins and the president of the NFL Players Association, I wanted to come down and personally thank you for your support. Uh, it was a pleasure partnering with Mr. Jackson uh, and some of the other uh, parish commissions. We look forward to your, your continued support on next year. This is a camp that is a free camp to all kids from ages 8 to 18. Last year we had over 255 kids that attended. This year we had just as many register. Uh, the rain kind of you know threw us a curve however we had a backup plan so we went uh, took the camp to an indoor facility uh, at hard but fair over on Claiborne Avenue uh, I think in front of you guys you have just a little token of our appreciation it's a t-shirt from the camp uh, just to say thank you for your support and to let you know that your support means a lot to the lives of the kids that we touch every year so thank you again thank you, right. you Miss Johnson Okay, the next part I have is Ms. John Glover. John Glover, do you need my address? I don't. Okay, thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Okay, I'm interested in the public hearing section Seemingly, when we are asked as the public to give our yay or nay, or if we have a comment or whatever, we're not really fluent in what the ordinance is saying. And I know that you all cannot speak to us directly if such a question were to arise in that public hearing section, but you will later in the final passage section discuss to whatever <coughs> extent but I don't know that I would be able to walk away with an explanation satisfactory where if I were asked what was it truly about and how did it come about, what could I say to support what you all will or will not support? I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. I have no <coughs> other cards, Mr. Clark. Okay. No, we move to visitors at this time. Okay. Mr. Larson, Mr. Ben Scott. And Ms. Riegel. Okay. Ms. Shelley Riegel. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Hi, Shelley. Hi. Welcome. Oh, how are you doing? Hi. The floor is yours. 
Uh, okay, I think I've just been asked to give kind of an update on kind of where we are with the Arlington and how things are progressing. Um, so we, we have an official distillery license from the U.S. government, which is always nice. Um, construction continues to move on. Uh, steel should be arriving in the next day or two, and we should start moving on no longer demo, but building up, putting in floors and a, a roof on it. Um, Kevin Bryan is finishing the final drawings. Iberia Bank should sign off on the, con the construction line of credit. And then we should finish up demo and build out the whole space from there. We're still hopeful for a early spring opening for the entire property. Uh, we have a commission on the board, Commissioner Stephen I, Jackson. Oh, that's Shelly, kind of just. Are we under, are we under visitors. Yeah. Visitors. 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 Yeah, we can. Where does it say? Am I missing something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, I actually. Um, Ask them to come down to uh, to uh, talk about the progress, but particularly because I know in my district um, I have a, and Dr. Wilson and Donna and Jimmy, we often get into this with with regards to property, and so that's particularly why I wanted to have Shelley come down because there's a lot of adjudicated property, and this piece of property has some very similarities to what's going on, particularly in downtown Choice neighborhood Heritage Place. So. Uh, I'm glad you could come down. I'm glad Shelly was able to make time to come down. Sure. So I just want Shelly to also give us, just kind of walk us through the history of how we got here. And you see this all the time with people speculating on property and that type of stuff. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm Shelly Regal. I'm the director of SPARM. I know most of y'all. Thank you for having me today. Um, I want to say we appreciate the commissioners who came for the ribbon cutting. Several of you were there. And it's a very exciting project in the Shreveport Common area. It is one of those projects that took a blighted historical building that had been adjudicated for years and is going to put it back not only on the tax roll, but it's going to save a historic structure. Um, we're very excited about that, but it didn't happen just like that. We have been in this process for since really the fire at Shrek many, many years ago. It seems like it was just yesterday, but time has flown by. But this pe this particular piece of property, like a lot of them in Shreveport Common, um, we didn't just say, let's go get the Arlington, because we want the Arlington. It all started with the vision plan, the Shreveport Common vision plan that was adopted in 2012 by not only the city council, but also the MPC. So we had a plan before we started uh, you know, acquiring properties. This one, um, in 2013, then Mayor Glover said, I want us to get the Arlington. It was a long process. We um, went through a really, we did not do what a lot of times you do when you have adjudicated property. We just take our interest. We actually went through the courts to acquire ownership so that we could then sell the piece of property. Had we done it the way governments are able to do, then we would not have been able to sell it. So it was really important to go through that process because the owner is absent owner. We had to hire a conservatorship to represent her when we went to court. We had to do all the right things so that this property then could be available to be marketed to the right person. We are so fortunate. We've had it, like I said, since, um, well, we were instructed to get it in 2014. I'm not sure we've closed on it till almost the end of uh, 13 we were told into 14 did we actually get the property so it's it seems like yesterday but if you look at it it's taken us five years to get to this point and we were very fortunate that we found a developer who met the vision plan ideas and ideals and if, thank goodness for Lindsay and for Andrew are we you know it may still be sitting empty but I think for us getting property we just don't get, we have not made it a habit in any in any property that we acquire, not only in Shreveport Common, but other places, to just acquire property to be acquiring it. It's all based on some plan, whether it's choice or or it's based on a vision plan like Shreveport Common or something that some developments, you know, along what people like to refer to as, you know, the medical and technology corridor. You know, there's a plan before of why we go to get those properties. The good thing for the parish that when we do this, when we bought this property, you were paid all your back taxes. And then 
as Andrew and Lindsay now have ownership, they'll be making payments on their taxes too. So, you know, it's all been a very methodical, well thought out plan before we start to acquire. And um, we've been very fortunate to um, not only have some money, but we've had a very good um, source of private donors to help us acquire property. So that's kind of how we got here. And now we're into a very exciting project, so. All right. Other questions? All right, thank you, Ms. Regal, for sharing that information with us and giving us an update. Uh, Commissioner John Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Andrew, I just wanted to thank you and Lindsay for your efforts in this project and the time you spent to seek out and acquire and now renovate a historic building. It's a real, it shows real entrepreneurial, real entrepreneurial spirit and uh, risk taking and I appreciate y'all's investment in our community and I wish you every, every good success in your venture. Yes, very exciting. Commissioner thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah. Yes, um, again, I, I just wanna thank Dr. Larson. I know you're busy. That's why we had to get him in today because uh, he's a physici physician and his wife is a physician as well. So uh, getting him in is a plus. Uh, and having Shelly come down. I see Wendy is over there, Wendy Benscotter, who keeps the Shreveport coming. A lot of people don't know we meet monthly. Uh, I've been kind of absent. I've been mm -hmm. begging for a phone call in. But sometimes uh, when Randy was here, Randy would come in and sit in for me. Um, but we meet monthly. Uh, we discuss what's going on. Uh, we talk about the properties within the Shreveport Common Corridor. Uh, and um, Shelly, I hope that, that this will become a case study um, for what you did because oftentimes I need stuff like that when I'm trying to make the case of why are we doing this um, and so those case studies of how this came about and you know a lot of times and I get it sometimes for us we just want the properties back on the tax roll but I'm always saying we want it back on the tax rolls with value and benefits added and so uh, this is one of those examples, and we didn't get here overnight. It took a little while. It took a process, and you laid it out. There was a vision that came before it, uh, and a lot of times we have to just see it, see it through the process. And I appreciate, I appreciate everybody for uh, their support, and uh, I think there was a lot of energy that was there uh, for the groundbreaking, and uh, I think that same energy will be there uh, as it breathes new life into downtown Shreveport. So thank you all. Thank you. Yes. And I think, just to wrap it up, I think you'll see some other announcements and grant ribbon cuttings coming pretty soon in that area. Great. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Good job. Next, we move to public hearing on ordinances. Ordinance number 5887 of 2019. Amend the budget of best revenues and expenditures for the Riverboat Fund in the amount of 43000 to provide an appropriation of 20000 to Providence House, 15000 to Hope Connections, and 8,000 Northwest Louisiana Golf and Education Foundation. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of ordinance number 5887? Is there anyone here to speak against ordinance number 5887? I see none. I declare this public hearing on ordinance number 5887 closed. Ordinance number 5888, amend the budget investment revenues and expenditures for the Public Works Fund and the Capital Outlay Fund in the amount of 50000 to provide an appropriation to install welcome signs on I-49. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of ordinance number 5888? Is there anyone here to speak against ordinance number 5888? See none. I declare this public hearing on ordinance number 5888 closed. Ordinance number 5889 of 2019 declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator or designee to sell the parish of Caddo's tax interest in certain surplus adjudicated properties. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of ordinance number 5889? Is there anyone here to speak against ordinance number 5889? I see none. I declare this hearing on ordinance number 5889 closed. Ordinance number 5890 to close and abandon a portion of dedication of First Street located in Trosper Estate Subdivision in the Parish of Caddo. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of ordinance number 5890? 
Is there anyone here to speak against ordinance number 5890? I see none. I declare this public hearing on ordinance number 5890 closed. Ordinance number 5891 of 2019, authorizing an amendment to ordinance number 5841 of 2019. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of ordinance number 5891? Is there anyone here to speak against ordinance number 5891? I see none. I declare this public hearing on ordinance number 5891 closed. That closes public hearings. We move to ordinances for final passage. Ordinance number 5887 of 2019, amendment budget adjustment Second. Okay, was moved by Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson and that was seconded by Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Are you on the board? Uh, Would you like to speak on your motion, Commissioner Johnson? No. Okay, Commissioner Jackson, no, are you on the board? Right it was old, okay. Vice President Chavez. Uh, thank you, President. I just wanted to check, are these on here now because they missed the deadline for the NGOs? Or why, why are they on here now? That's my question and I guess I can address this to Donna Frazier. I'm sorry. I can only, so, uh, parliamentary, I was supposed to speak to the president. She may not know, so I'll address you. Um, Commissioner, it's my recollection that um, the Providence House did submit a late application. There appears to have been some mix up in communication about whether they received an application. I'm not sure about Hope Connections. I'm not familiar with that organization. The $8,000 to Northwest Louisiana Youth Golf and Education, they were appropriated, I believe, originally $25,000. So this would raise that appropriation. 2500 $2,500, I'm sorry. Would raise that appropriation to the 8000 So you're saying for the, for the, for the T, the, uh, the first T, they were, they were appropriated money, but we're raising it now? This ordinance would raise the amount, yes. Okay. Uh, and then is there any reason why these are all grouped together as opposed to us voting on them independently? Because neither one, uh, none of the three kind of have anything to do with each other. Um, that is how I believe the um, committee put them together in their motion out of committee. Okay. That's exactly Th correct. Thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, President. Okay, you're welcome. Commissioner John Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I have concerns about NGO funding being awarded outside of the discipline structured annual process, so I'll be voting no for that reason. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, <coughs> I, I guess one of the reasons why this is on there is because um, even though Providence House did submit one late, it was after the, the time in which we voted. Um, they received no funding. Uh, Hope Connections is a new one that's basically running into some um, needing some emergency funding. And the first T, uh, basically the 2500 wasn't going to help them do the programs in which they're trying to do to keep and keep our kids motivated and, and off the street. So this program of first T helps them develop golf skills, which it's a lot better than them uh, throwing rocks in somebody's house and breaking a window. So uh, that's why they're all on here. And these did come out of the committee and they all uh, passed out, out of the committee. Um, if that's another question that you might have. Uh, so we discussed them all during our committee meeting. And so they're here today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, highlight the fact that um, these are organizations that are helping people, um, really and truly some of our most vulnerable people. Um, Hope Connections and Providence House. Um, um, First T was awarded $2,500, and I think just their insurance alone is $5,000. Um, and in previous years, Eric, I think they we're getting ten thousand dollars. They've gotten various appropriations of five to ten. Thousand. Five to ten thousand dollars, and so uh, they were dropped all the way down to twenty five hundred dollars, um, and so they can't even they haven't they haven't even been able to start the program that they have been doing for years uh, at the amount, and so uh, this is this is to bring them up to at least an acceptable amount so that they can move forward. 
uh, with part of their programming uh, because without it they can't they can't do anything uh, with twenty five hundred dollars. Um, but again, uh, Providence House, they're accepting battered women and families in this community who have nowhere else to go. And if you've ever been to a Providence House graduation, um, it's hard to leave out of the graduation with a dry eye because you see these families, black and white, uh, throughout Cattle Parish. Um, these women and who, who are now stable and sufficient enough to take care of their, their children and provide and become productive citizens in our community. Uh, Hope Connections, again, uh, we talked a couple of years ago about the homeless people uh, laying out in front of the courthouse. Uh, they have a rapid response team that goes out into the community and get people um, off the streets. Um, so we're talking about investing in people. And this is a fraction of the cost of investing in people. This is an investment in the most vulnerable individuals in our community. And I, I think this is a good and wise investment for us to make. Um, and so I hope that we will not necessarily be so rigid um, and confined to what the rules say. We amend budgets all the time. Uh, that's what this process is about. Um, if it was not that way, then I could see it. But our process sets it up to where when there is a need out there, uh, we're not there to meet them 100% of the way, but we're trying to meet them at some part of the way. And I appreciate what these organizations do for the our entire region, not just this community, but for our entire region. Uh, without them, I don't know uh, what that safety net, safety net would be uh, in our community. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Commissioner Lynn Carthorne. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I want to first of all uh, say that I do concur with uh, Commissioner Atkins' concern as it relates to being timely in the submission of applications and the, the uh, adjudication of those applications and the process that we do have. But the further accent that I do concur with Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Jackson, that life does happen. And I was afforded the opportunity of being in the committee meeting that day and hearing the compelling arguments that these three organizations do provide to this local community. And I'm, and I'm consistent in terms of uh, vetting organizations like that. And if there's a community good, that it garners, I'm in support of that. So having been in that committee meeting that day, I'm very supportive of these organizations. Although I will acknowledge that this may be out of the process in, the, in terms of how we do it programmatically, but I would offer that an exception because of the, the exceptional work that these groups are doing. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir. Vice President Chavez, second time around. Thanks, President. I'd like to make a motion that we separate the three and we vote on each independently. Second. Um, I can speak on it if you'd like. Or well, if first let me make sure okay. that that can be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You can speak on it. Thank you, President. Uh, very cut and dry. I, I don't, you know, I may agree with one but not the other, or I may have some new information about one that, <coughs> that uh, disagrees with another, and I think re realistically we should take each one individually as opposed to just putting different organizations into one piece of legislation um, and, and in essence handicapping us to vote on an entire situation on three totally different topics. So I'd like to move forward with us to vote on each one independently. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thanks, President. Okay. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you. Um, when I look at the minutes of 6 June 2019, I show that there's two of the commissioners that were not present, and I'm sorry, three of them that were not present for discussion, and also that the first two was an added addition, uh, addendum item um, for that reason I just think we should separate them out because I don't agree with all of them so I'll be voting no for all of them I might get some yeses on one or two of them Thank you. but uh, two of the commissioners uh, uh, Dominic and Chavez were not there and that's two sevenths of the uh, whole committee and so the, for us to come say the committee suggested this doesn't really reflect that committee that's it thank you Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson thank you Madam President uh, I guess I'll start with that comment first. Uh, I do, the committee voted as a majority, so if there was a quorum, that represents the committee. If the committee members wasn't there, then, I mean, as we have been doing all year, all term, 
if you miss a committee meeting and you're, you're assigned to that committee and you miss it, then you didn't vote. But if the committee passed it, then it came out of the committee and this is what we say. So some things, you know, I hear when we get out of here that it comes out of the committee, it passed out of the committee. So that's telling some to say, okay, we need to vote that way because it passed out of the committee. Well, today, this passed out of the committee. And so now there is problem because it passed out of the committee. Second of all, um, when we do our original budget, um, and we'll be doing the same thing in uh, December when we have our, our meeting, is we vote on the appropriations as one time, one group, all of them at one time. So we don't break them all out and say, well, we vote for each one separately. Um, that, that is done in the committee meeting. In the committee meeting, we go through line by line each one and then come up with a value, and then that now represents what we will propose to the whole body. We don't sit here and say we take one, take one, take one. Now, there are some times where we do add some from the floor, but that's totally different from what we're talking about today. This came out of committee, just like they come out of committee for the initial budget. So I would say that we vote no on the substitute motion, and we move forward with this because we still got some more things on the agenda to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yes, yeah, Madam President, thank you. I have a call, uh, Todd. Was this, was the committee meeting that day advertised? Yes. And I think, did you notify all the committee members or did you just notify certain ones? No, it goes out to everyone. So everybody got the notification. Oh, oh, that, that's a member, yes. Oh, and then you sent out that regular agenda that's correct. that goes out to the website <laughs> that's correct. that everybody gets, even if you're not on the committee. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that process, because I want to make sure because things kind of get lost uh, that that nobody didn't have a chance to um, the the committee meeting went set up to where somebody was uh, you know miss to to miss uh, so I want to make sure we underscore that point um, and Attorney Frazier I, I'm confused now my understanding is if we're going to vote on these individually they all should have had an individual public hearing. Commissioner, I don't think that's correct as long as everybody was given a chance to do any comments that included all three. But if we if if we vote on these individually, the ordinance is not the same. The purpose of the notice and the public hearing is to make sure anyone who's interested has an opportunity to come in. The public was notified that all of these organizations was would be considered on today's date. So therefore, there is nothing lost if you go by and vote on them individually that they wouldn't have had a, an opportunity to comment on. So the whereas of the, or the outcome of it, so if only two get adopted, then I mean, Commissioner, it's no different than if somebody made a substitute motion instead of, I want to vote on these individually. I, um, I make a substitute motion that um, I want to vote on or that we only pass one of them. Or I make a substitute motion that we only do uh, the first one and the third one. You can make any of those <coughs> substitute motions. Madam President. Yes, sir. Well, no, I'll get back on the board. I'll get back on the board a third time. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'd like to ask the uh, president to move on to germaneness of the motion. Okay. Is that germane? And is that the discretion of the president to determine if it's germane or not? Well, being that it came from the Appropriations Committee and um, as the attorney has stated that we can vote on them individually, um, it would be my suggestion if we would vote on the original motion. And if you're gonna vote it up or down, you could vote, you know, whichever your pleasure is. So <coughs> that would be my answer to that. So you're saying that the motion is not germane to the because I'm asking because I don't think it's germane <coughs> well I think that has been vetted commissioner that is germane according to the um, 
Okay. The request. If it's Jermaine, I'm just, I want it. Okay. Okay. I see no other discussion. Okay, we're voting first on the substitute motion. To divide them up to three? Yes. If you're in favor of dividing them up, then you vote yes. If you're not, then you vote no. Please vote. <coughs> okay, and that passes seven to four. Okay. So at this time, we're going to vote on them. The first one that we'll vote on. The first one is provide a proper extra 20,000. Providence house. house. Okay. Everyone understands what we're voting on? 20,000 for the Providence House. If you're in favor, yes. If you're not, no. Okay, that passes, 8-3. Next item. 15, we'll, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 15,000 to Hope Connections. Okay. Okay, and that passes. Next item. 8,000 to Northwest Louisiana Youth Golf and Education Foundation. Okay, and that passes. And that fails. Seven. Six, Six. okay. Has to have a vote of seven. Seven, okay. All right. Madam President. Yes, sir. Can we take a five minute recess? Sure. Thank you. Ms. Fraser, can I stand back? Five minute recess is in session. <laughs> Madam President, I hope we'll, we will reconvene in five minutes, I hope. All right. Set a timer, please, Mr. Todd. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome, sir. Thank you. 
That's not what I was trying to get in the middle of. Do I need to fix it? Mr. Now we move to next order of business, ordinance number 5888 of 2019. I'm in the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures for the public works fund. And we we'll have second. It's moved by Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson and second by the chair. Commissioner Johnson, would you like to speak on your motion? No. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, are you on the board? Yes, I like to. I move to in Globo and adopt ordinance number 5888, ordinance number 5889, <coughs> ordinance number 5890, and ordinance number 5891. Okay. There's a second. Sir. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Stephen Jackson and that was second by Commissioner Linda B. Johnson? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, would you like to speak? No, ma'am. Okay. Please vote. I, I was. Are you on the board? Mobile. Commissioner yes. Dominique is on the board. Yeah, I, I would, I'm going to vote no on this. I would like to, some of these I vote yes for, and uh, I just think it kind of gets back into that thing that even this um, Glover? Glover said a while ago, sometimes, you know, um, it's going to be hard for you guys on these ordinances. I just think that the ordinances on Thursday should be voted on the individual. Okay. Please vote. Next, we move to resolutions. <laughs> Resolution number 56 of 2019. Wait, that was just a substitute. That was just a substitute. That was just a substitute. Yeah, it's just a substitute. Yeah, 
That was a substitute. Yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving right along here. <laughs> All right, we'll do each one then. Tyler's got ribs on the grill. Just trying to get Order those numbers. Fifty-eight, eighty-eight. That's fine. I, what I was going to do. We're fine. No need to talk. Okay. Okay. That's the original motion yes. to adopt that one. Okay. okay. We're voting on ordinance number fifty-eight, eighty-eight. Please vote. <coughs> Oh, and that passes 10 1. Next, we move to ordinance number 5889, declare certain certificate properties to be surplus and authorize the pressure administrator designee to sell tax interest. Move by the chair. Second. Please vote. Okay, that passes 11 0. Next item. Ordinance number 5890. To close and abandon the portion dedicated for First Street, located in Trosper Estates. Moved by the chair. Second. Second by Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Please vote. Okay, and that passes 11 0. Ordinance number 5891, authorizing an amendment to ordinance number 5841. Move to adopt. Second. Moved by Commissioner Johnson. Second by Commissioner Jackson. Please vote. Hold on. We got no, vice wait, president. I thought I, I tried to hit request to speak. I did just want to make one clarification on this. Okay. And I mean, I don't. You're not on the board, on. but go ahead. Um, is it? This is an amendment to the amendment that we made. This isn't going back. And so I, looking at the way this read, I just wanted to make this perfectly clear that the only changes, we're still getting itemized bills. We're still um, checking out the work. All this does is that uh, Caddo Community Action Agency is the one that writes out the bill and does the inspection other than FEMA. Doing and that that's the only change. Red, they're doing Cross. the assessment. That's the only change. Red Cross instead of Red Cross. Okay. That I just wanted the public to know that. Thank you. Okay. Vice President Chavez. Thanks, President. Uh, I'm going to vote no on this, guys. The only reason is because I have yet to receive um, the documentation I requested in regards to the exact prerequisites from Red Cross and the difference from CCAA. So since I don't have that information that I requested, um, I don't feel comfortable laxing the prerequisites or changing them without the data. So just for the record, thank you, President. Okay. Attorney Frazier. Um, Commissioner Chavez, I think I uh, let you know when you requested that information that neither organization uses a checklist. What they do is uh, Red Cross did a visual outer inspection from the street. CCAA does a visual inspection from the street goes in the house home as well and looks for sign of signs of storm damage but there's not a checklist per se that either one of them used so there was no documentation to provide to you now once they've gone and done the inspection there will be documentation of the inspection and what was on those inspections but there's nothing no blank forms for them to, to give Okay, that's it, attorney. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, on this amendment, it's only saying that CCA will do an assessment instead of the Red Cross. Uh, we discussed why that, that was going to be done, and that's because all the ones who did the, the assessment with the Red Cross are no longer there. CCA was there from the beginning, and so they have the eye to go look and do the, the second assessment that we requested. This is something that we requested that the majority voted for to get done. So this is what this is about. Nothing else. Everything else is still in place. Now, if there's additional information that you wanted and they don't have it or they didn't have that created, it's nothing that they can provide you if that's not what they, they do. So I don't know if this was a witch hunt to say that, you know, you want to get out of having a disaster fund and putting all this stuff in place. <coughs> I don't know. Or maybe something happens in Southern Hills and then there all of a sudden all of these will be relaxed and say, well, let's not do this, let's not do that. But, you know, 
uh, we stepped up to the plate to try to help people because FEMA was not going to come in. Um, you got people with that had holes in their roofs, and a lot of people didn't have insurance on their homes. And so we end up with blighted areas all across the parish, inside of the city, outside the city. We didn't have all these issues when we had the 2015 incident, 2016 incident. We had actually two in 2016 because we had a tornado in Blanchard and we had a flood. So uh, I don't know why it's so now so that we got to have this, 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 and this and all in place. Uh, the damages on these houses were more because trees fell on homes and now you had flooding from the inside instead of flooding coming from the outside in it's coming from the top down so I mean there there is a reason why this is much higher than the other ones that have been so vote your heart vote your conscience thank you okay vice president Chavez thank you president I just wanted to respond and get back on the board to uh, Ms. Frazier, um, I deal in absolutes, and I'd rather see a, a standard operating procedure uh, that stipulates these are the exact prerequisites and the requirements. Just having a verbal, well, these guys do it a little bit differently. If you go buy a home, uh, they're going to have a checklist that the lender will guarantee that your home inspector will go down the list checking. And if we're responsible for the taxpayer's money, I think we should have the same level of scrutiny that somebody else does at their job. So if, if I'm chastised for that, and uh, you can say, you know, vote your heart or you don't have one, hey, so be it. Uh, this is my job, and this is what the people elected me to do. Thanks, President. Okay. Um, I would just like to say that I think that some of the things that you're asking for are some of the things that are given to the residents. I think that they've been through a whole lot just to get to this step. And it has actually stopped a lot of them from progressing. So this will give... Cattle Community Action Agency, what, they're, what they need, that leverage that they need to be able to go into those homes and to assess those properties. It's, it's not anything um, that we personally have, but it's something that they have, something that they have to look at. We have someone out here in the audience today that still doesn't have her home fixed because they don't have the authority to go in there to do that at this time. So this is something that needs to be in place so that they can continue to move forward. We've been on this over a year and a half now. And you know, we, we talked about this last Christmas. We're leaving people with holes in their roofs and their floor. You know, and if it's this minor adjustment as Commissioner Atkins said, let's look at it and make it happen so that they can get the help that they need. So I don't think anyone is, you know, um, chastising you for voicing your thoughts about it, but I just wanted to make sure that you had some clarity in it as well. Do I still have another time to speak? No. No? Sounds yes. good. Okay. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yeah. Um, uh, Eric, uh, th th this is coming from what fund? It's coming um, from the uh, Reserve Trust Fund. And, and is there a tax associated with the Reserve Trust Fund? No, sir. So I want to be clear that this is not taxpayer money. <laughs> it's a public fund. It's public dollars, and Dr. Wilson, I believe, or Attorney Frazier, I believe we have received every report that we have asked from the Cattle Community Action Agency. That's correct. I believe the investigation that was allegedly done found no misuse or misbenditures or anything like that. That's correct. So I'm trying to figure out what else are we needing this absolute assurance because at some point I can come down here and want absolute assurance on certain things that I'm trying to figure out. And I guess when, when you get back on the board, I'm trying to figure out what is this absolute assurance because we've met and this organization has met every metric that they possibly could um, to show that they're doing the work and it's being done by competent contractors. We've got folks with holes in their walls, no roof over their head, holes in their floor, raining on them. And we're sitting down here playing pity pat, like we, you know, playing pity pat about nothing. I just don't understand what else do we want. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, Madam President. 
um, I don't want to belabor the point, um, but um, I think that what you would like, um, Commissioner Chavez, we would like that as well. But the process, you under, we all understand process and procedures. That's not the process at this point. So we are limited with what the process is. So Correct. it would be nice if it was different and if it offered those things, but it does not. Um, and also you use the term um, possibly lax, but with the explanation that was given by Attorney Frazier, it seems to be more, um, to have more oversight than what Red Cross had. If one looks at the, if they both look at the outside, and then we see that the other organization looks at the outside and the inside. That does not appear to be lax in any way. So I can understand it would be nice if, we, if that was an option. It's not an option for us at this point. So I can appreciate your position. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Yeah, I just wanted to touch base on something. I want to make sure that Commissioner Matthew Lynn touched on it. We're not allocating any more money. We've already allocated the money. So if you're against the money, you know, that has nothing to do with this. This is only changing the way it's the going to be assessed, okay? So I don't want the public to think we're allocating more money. <coughs> it's just a, I said a clerical change uh, that changed it to Caddo Community Action Agency based on uh, assessments provided by the Caddo Community Action Agency personnel. Exactly. It's not changing any money. We're not allocating any more money. I just want to make that clear. So, but it will people are shaking their heads. So, do what? It will prevent them from moving forward with some of the things. That yeah, they but I'm just saying that the, inside. the CCA exactly the, it's the CCA personnel that will do the assessments. It yes. doesn't have anything to do with money because we've already voted that and already allocated the money. Okay, that's it, sir. That's it. Okay, Commissioner Lynn Carthorn. Call for the question. Second. Okay, the question has been called. Please vote on calling for the question. I voted uh, yes, obviously. I voted again. Thanks, You're welcome. Okay, and that passes 11 0. Okay. Please no. vote on the motion. We're voting on the actual motion? Then? Yes. Yes. Yes, as it reads. Mr. Coffin? I, I pulled the lever. Chris, I got a call. We're off air. Again, again, sir. We're not on. There you go. That's what going to take on. I couldn't hear you. Thank you. Uh, that passes 10 1. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move to resolutions. Resolution number 56 <coughs> 2019. Okay, moved by the chair. Second. Okay. I see no discussion. I ask for your support on this vote. All right, I got it. Commissioner John on. Atkins. Okay, there you go. Commissioner Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. I was just uh, wanting a little input from the from the administration on on how all this works, Dr. Wilson. Is this a, is this a standard process? Yes, it is. And we've done it in the past. Yes, sir, we have. Okay, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Doug Dominic. So this is the 60-40 program. That's correct. And um, I guess. You know, this is one of those things that we talk about. A lot of people call. We tell them you do the 60-40 program. So it's, I guess, the first time that I've been here, really, since this has really happened. So I think it's important that we have this, and hopefully you can get enough people to sign the petition to do this. Yes. I think that if the way it works is the citizens pay 40%, the parish will pay 60% to cool. bring the road up to the parish standard. Cool. Uh, they can pay it out over time. Uh, they don't have to pay it off of you know, one year, usually over 10 year, maybe 15 year assessment cycle. So I'll be supporting this, no problem. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Matthew Lynn. Um, that if, if people don't know, I believe it is at least 50% of the neighborhood have to vote in favor of it. Mm -hmm. yes. And that once you get over 50% of the neighborhood voting in favor of it, then there is a lien put on every house in the neighborhood. And so if you voted no, you still get a lien on your property as well if the other people don't carry it. And so there's there's positive and negative to it. I'm just <coughs> going to vote in favor of it. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's a heavy weight for the neighborhood. 
That's all. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Lyndon V. Johnson. Um, I just was basically going to say, that, I mean, we've done these programs before. Might have been at a different percentage, but it's been done before. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to say that it is the first time that we've done it. Just the percentage has been a little different. Uh, and, I mean, when, when a lot of these homeowners bought land over there, they thought they had basically parish roads. Uh, to find out later on that that what, wasn't what they actually had. So this is basically doing a right or wrong. Uh, I think now, uh, Robert, do, do we put, uh, do we have the PD on all the roads that are not uh, parish roads? Yes. Okay, so this whole neighborhood didn't even have any PDs, so. Right, which is a private drive, so no one knew that they was uh, buying a, a the they buying in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that basically that they owned the road as well, and they had to maintain and upkeep it. Uh, imagine if they knew that up front, then they probably would have did something totally different. But uh, this is kind of like making sure that these homes are three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar houses, and so they should have proper roads going into the neighborhood. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are these streets completely already developed as far as having homes on them or not? Yes. yes. They are 100%. Okay. Yes. And then there will be a later a hearing that we'll have to go through. That they'll be able to come down here and talk about it, right? Yes. yes. In a public hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the first of many steps. And okay. um, that was it, Commissioner Middleton? That's it. Thank you. Okay. I'll just add that is uh, some of the other commissioners has already said this <laughs> is um, a program that we do offer here. Um, um, it's been over a million dollars spent in taxes to Caddo Parish. It's a Caddo Parish only resident. However, they're not receiving any services in this area outside of animal control. So it's, um, it's an asset to have this community to be added to Caddo Parish, and it's something that we've done before. Um, as we have in the past and as I said this is the first step of many along the way but this one needs to begin to, so that we can get to the next one we've had the petition signed and over 50 percent has definitely been in agreement with it so I thank you for your support on this vote please vote <coughs> and that passes 11-0 Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move to old business. Determine action to be taken relative to Cattle Parish alcohol beverage permits for the following businesses. Okay. We have Circle K, which we will not handle today. They are no longer in business. They are closed, have been closed for about four months now. Okay, let the record reflect that item number one, Circle K number 881 is no longer in business. Madam President, if you'd like, we can have South uh, Southside Saloon, the Derrick Tobacco Country, and JR Saloon, the people representing them, yes. come forward along with the Sheriff's Department, and we can swear them in for this hearing. Would you please stand and come forward to the podium? Face Mr. Clerk. Raise your right hand and repeat after him. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth. So help you God. Thank you. This time our first one is Southside Saloon, 12770 Mansfield Road. Okay, we'll hear from the detective first, sir, and then we'll hear from you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good detective afternoon. Larry Pierce from the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office. You want me to just go ahead right into the... Yes, right. sir. Can I hear um, On uh, February the 21st, 2019, um, myself, uh, Corporal Williams, and Deputy Tristan Highfield, all from the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office, were conducting an underage alcohol sales operation. Uh, Deputy Highfield is 20 years old and was working undercover during the operation with me. At about 1,800 hours, Deputy Highfield and I arrived at the South, at the South Side Saloon located at 12770 Mansfield Road, Keithville, Louisiana, 71047. Uh, Deputy Highfield and I entered the Southside Saloon. I then watched the bartender, who was a white male, later identified as Frederick Potts, date of birth 7-18-1950. Uh, 
uh, sell a 12 ounce bottle of Bud Light beer to Deputy Highfield. The total for the purchase was $2. Deputy Highfield now then exited the store. Uh, Corporal Williams then made contact with Mr. Potts and issued him a summons for Louisiana Revised Statute 14 93.1 unlawful sale to a person under 21. Um, note that uh, Mr. Potts did not attempt to verify Deputy Highfield's age in any manner. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, are you on the board for questions? No, I'm good. Okay. Detective, is this their first defense? Um, I don't have that in my notes, but I believe that this was their first offense within at least the 12. This is actually their second offense. They have an offense in May of 2018, which would put it in 365 okay. days. Okay. So they're beyond it. It's their first offense for 2019. Well, it would be the second offense As for, a for a 365 day period. Two, okay. Two months. Because of the time that it actually took place. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, we work. Yeah, it works off of my understanding. It's a 12 month calendar year. So. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, we just needed to be on record. In May of, of May of 2018. Uh, I don't believe that's correct. They do it. I have no clue. Last year, it was in 2018. I believe 2018 is not. And then correct. this, and this new charge was the February 21st of 19. Okay. Yes, sir. But the one from 18, I do not believe is correct. I had a charge four or five years ago. It may not necessarily have been um, him individually. It may have been the, the establishment, the business. Pardon? It may have been the business and not uh, you personally. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yes, ma'am, I understand that, but I own the business. Uh, I've only had to come here one time, and that was four to five years ago. Now, we chased you around for a few, few months last year. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the deputies had to serve you. It's not the same one? Okay. Close, but no. Uh, it's then, down the road from So is this uh, Let me double first? check while y'all talk to him. I'll okay. double check. Thank you. About that. Yes, sir. Okay. State your name, please, sir. Frederick Charles Potts. Okay, Mr. Potts, you may speak at this time. Pardon, ma'am? You may speak. Would you like to make any comments? Uh, yeah, I'd like to apologize to the commission, apologize to the people of Caddo Parish. I will do everything in my power to try to make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay. We have a commissioner on board. Thank you, sir. Um, commissioner Doug Dominic. Mr. Potts, um, and I guess it's because of uh, Detective Pierce, you know, normally it's kind of the convenience stores. It's Sometimes we have the saloons, but um, so you don't have a scanner or anything, correct? Uh, what I have in, what I have since found in, in this day and age, you have apps that you can have on your telephone that will give you exact age and whether or not it, the license is valid. And so you didn't do this or check with this guy? You, and no, it was actually you that sold no, it, huh? Yes, it was me. Uh, yes, sir. On, on that day, I, I was distracted. Uh, that's no excuse. I understand that. And you own this establishment? Yes, correct? sir, I do. It's a proprietorship. Have another photo. Okay. Mr. Clerk? It's first offense. It's my mistake. Okay. Let the record reflect that it is his first offense. Thank you. Can I see no other discussion? Make a motion. I make a motion that we do the first offense fine. Second. Second. Okay. It's been um, moved by Commissioner Doug Dominic and second by Commissioner Mike Middleton for the first offense of five hundred dollars. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mr. Smith is good with it. Please vote. <coughs> okay, and that passes ten zero. Mr. Potts, you can see uh I almost call him commissioner. Our clerk, uh, Todd Not Hopkins. Yet. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I will send you a letter, sir. And you can mail it in our chat. Okay. Next item. Yes, sir. It's the Derrick. Yes. Again, Detective Larry Pierce, Cato Sheriff's Office. Uh, also on February the 21st, 2019, uh, me. Corporal Williams and Deputy Tristan Highfield, all with the Caddo Sheriff's Office, did underage alcohol sales operation. 
uh, Deputy Highfield, same day, still 20 years old. I was undercover. Um, at about 1940 hours, Deputy Highfield and I arrived at the Derrick located at 6780 Colquitt Road, Keithville, Louisiana, 71047. Uh, Deputy Highfield entered the store while I watched from outside. I watched the clerk, who was a white female with brown hair, uh, later identified as Sherry Morgan, date of birth 10-15-1964, sell a 25-ounce can of Budweiser beer to Deputy Highfield. Total for the beer purchase of the beer was $2.37. Uh, Sherry was issued a summons for unlawful sale to a person under 21. Uh, Ms. Morgan did check Deputy Highfield's ID but did not scan it. Okay. They, so you said that she did check the ID but she did not <clears throat> use the scanner to scan the ID. Correct. She asked for the ID. She looked at it but didn't scan it or do any additional measures and still sold. Okay. Thank you, Detective. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the Derrick? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm Ron Norman. I have the Derrick in Keithville. Okay. Uh, Miss Sherry, she uh, uh, checked the ID, but she was relying on her ability to do the math <coughs> in her head, whereas she has a scanner available to her. And uh, even though I applauded her for checking the ID, she didn't uh, do a sufficient job. She's uh, gone to court since. And they, uh, I don't know if you want, but they dismissed her charges because of what she supposedly did. Uh, she had a photo of where she checked the ID and so on like that. Uh, I admonished her for not using the equipment to read it properly. Uh, all my people, they check IDs. Uh, and uh, I just recently had uh, another charge added to I, not me. I sold my store in March. I don't even own it anymore. But uh, I, I heard that uh, a lady got checked uh, last week or two, and uh, she scanned the ID. She read the ID. Even asked the guy how old he was, and she still sold it. But it's just a it's a uh, processing moment when you're busy, and her explanation to, to the owner was at a, uh, I was like an 18, buying tobacco. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, we put a lot of pressure on these people to be cashiers uh, to uh, verify the age. We can have all kind of equipment, we can have all kind of picture IDs, we can have all kind of stuff, but people are gonna make mistakes. Personally, I've never sold beer to a minor. I've been in this business since uh, about 82. And uh, uh, of course, I tend to end up in places like this because I owned the business at one time. Now, I sold it on March the 4th, and my full intention is to never sell beer or gas again. <laughs> it's just a very stressful life. Uh, I would appreciate y'all's leniency, but she did sell alcohol to a minor. Uh, to a, well, not a minor, a major, but still under age 21. And. Uh, and she's already gone to court for that. They dismissed her charges because she followed through with her job even though she had the wrong assessment. And um, I have a copy of the document if you need it or whatever, but it's signed by the clerk of court. But, uh, uh, it'd be a second offense for my business. Uh, the first offense was May of 2018. And I'd forgot about it. Uh, Todd reminded me, and I, I can't remember who it was that did it. But I can tell you it wasn't me. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your comments. Um, according, I, I understand that you have some paperwork that those charges have been dropped, but we still have a responsibility right. here uh, to incur the fines as necessary for a second offense. And we have some commissioners on the board, but it's very important to us that we're making sure along with um, Cattle Care Sheriff's Office, that we're not selling alcohol to underage um, individuals, as well as preventing things that would happen on the street from that. Right. So um, we're sorry that you, know, that you as the owner still, because it was your business at that time, but yeah, well, you're still responsible for it. Now I understand mistakes do happen, but they also cost us some time. So mm -hmm. we have a couple other commissioners that are on the board. Um, Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. I'd like to make motion for a second offense fine. 
750. 750. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, and that was moved by Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson, and that was second by Commissioner Jim Smith. Okay. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you. I'm going to censure myself. I should not have voted on the Southside Saloon because of affiliation with the Cato Sheriff's Office, and I'll be abstaining from this one on uh, the Derrick also for the same reason. Okay. Thank you for stating your reason for abstention. Vice President Chavez. Thanks, President. Uh, Attorney Fraser, just a uh, clarification for this situation. Since the gentleman sold the business, if we assess the second offense fine, does it go to him or does it go to the LLC? It um, will go to whomever had the business as of the date of the offense. And so I'm not real sure. It was a sub S. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that? Sub S Corporation. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Attorney. Um, Thanks, President. Okay. See no further discussion. Please vote. Okay, that passes nine with one abstention. And Mr. Clerk, we'll send you something in the mail. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. The next one, Tobacco Country. Still Detective Larry Pierce. <laughs> um, on February the 21st, 2019, uh, myself, Corporal Williams, and Deputy Tristan Highfield were conducting underage, sell, underage alcohol sales operation. Deputy Highfield was 20 years old at the time of the operation and working undercover at about 19, it yeah, it was later than that. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, typo on there. I don't have my full report with me, but later that evening, um, still on the same day, uh, I believe it was around 9, 9 p.m., uh, Deputy Highfield and I arrived at Tobacco Country located at 11590 U.S. Highway 80, Greenwood, Louisiana 71033. Uh, Deputy Highfield walked up to the sales window while I watched from a short distance. I heard Deputy, ask, mm -hmm. Deputy Highfield ask for a fifth of Maker's Mark. The clerk, who is a white female with brown and blonde hair, later identified as Hazel Sanford, date of birth 12-9-1976. Then asked Deputy Highfield if he had his ID because he looked awfully young. Deputy Highfield provided his ID. Hazel looked at the ID and then asked Deputy Highfield what year he was born. Deputy Highfield responded 1998, which is correct. I then watched Hazel Sanford sell Deputy Highfield a 750 milliliter bottle of Maker's Mark whiskey. The total for the purchase of the whiskey was $17.50. Deputy Highfield and I then left the business. Corporal Williams made contact with the clerk uh, with Miss Sanford. Sanford was uh, issued a summons for RS 14.93.11, unlawful sale to a person under 21. Uh, I did not see her scan the ID, just look and ask further questions. And what, what month was the uh, underage? Say, I heard you say 98, so I know it's 21 soon or to be. I do not recall. Call Deputy Highfield's exact date of birth at the moment. I don't have that. I mean, I don't have that in there. I, I can confirm to you that he was 20 years old at the time and not 21. But uh, actually, he's turning 21 this month. Okay. So I can tell you that it was sometime in July. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any representative <coughs> here from Tobacco Country? Huh? I have a question for you, Detective. Um, Detective Pierce. Commissioner Jackson has yeah, a question I, for you. I didn't see you. Did I hear, I'm sorry. How, did I hear you say they sold to the to the deputy to the detect to the deputy? Yes, we have some deputies that work for the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office are not yet 21 years old okay. when they become and employed. They, that's the undercover And in lieu person. of using, yeah. okay. you know, some citizen that you know we had just have the opportunity there to take some you know uh, alleviate any concerns of like a citizen getting injured. We use we utilize the deputy in this case that was under 21 years old. Okay, I, that's where I was getting confused. Okay. It was a lot of moving parts, and I kept hearing you say, detect me, deputy, deputy, deputy. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. The leading steward of Tobacco Country. And okay, like Stewart. the first gentleman, I apologize for what she did. 
I do not know why she didn't use the app on the phone because that's what we've been doing. But um, she's no longer employed with me. So. Okay. Ms. Stewart, is, um, Mr. Clark, is this their first, what, first, what offense? First offense. First offense. Okay. I asked her what she was doing here. Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Okay. And what did I say? Uh, what happened again? <laughs> okay. I see no other commissioners on the board. I'll make a motion for first offense, $500. Second. Okay. And that was second by Commissioner John Atkins. Okay. Please vote. Just one thing when y'all get through voting. Okay, this passes 9-0. Yes, ma'am. Like this gentleman where they slapped his person on the wrist because she did look and scanned and everything, but they didn't charge her. That's exactly what they did to my person. They slapped her on the wrist and didn't charge her. Mm -hmm. In fact, they gave her her ABO card back and told her to go back to work. Well, I mean, you know, she could go work somebody else. Right. And I mean, I understand. I've been here before. Right. I understand. But I really and truly believe when y'all take some kind of action against the people who sell to underage, that's when it's going to get their attention. It all falls back on the owners. That's across the street. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because we're just responsible for this part, I and know. and but you should advocate for that. I agree. I think that that would make a difference. So Lewis continue Johnson to advocate for it. <laughs> across the street, <laughs> go to the <laughs> sheriff's <laughs> office. They're the ones who handled that. The sheriff's office. Okay. <laughs> All right. Somebody needs to do something. Thank you, Miss Stewart. <laughs> Next, we have JR Saloon. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Scoggins with the Caddo Sheriff's Office. I supervise the, uh, these operations. Uh, detective Jacob Bergeron is the, uh, my detective that actually made, made this uh, arrest, but he's unavailable due to being in, out of town in training. So I'm going to read this for him. Um, on February 21st, 2019, Detective Bergeron and Deputy Owen and a confidential informant number 2009-137, who was 20 years old, conducting an underage alcohol sales operation. At about 1845 hours, uh, confidential informant and Deputy Bergen arrived at 15596 Louisiana Highway 1 at JR Saloon in Vivian. The CI went inside the bar. Deputy Bergen watched from a window outside. Uh, she approached a bartender who was a white female with blonde hair, later identified as Pamela Sanchez, date of birth 8-23-56. Ms. Sanchez sold the 20-year-old CI 12-ounce Michelob Ultra bottled beer. Total for the purchase of the beer was $3. Uh, Pamela did not ask the CI for her, her uh, ID, but an employee at the door did, checked it, and allowed her to continue into the, to the bar. Uh, the CI then returned uh, after the sale. Deputy Owens went to contact Ms. Sanchez and issued her a summons for RS 1493.11 unlawful sales to persons under 21. Okay. So this time it wasn't the Deputy Commissioner Jackson or that you All right. CI. <laughs> All right. And after this, I can address the rejected charges if y'all would like to hear. Sure. You could do it right now. Okay. Um, we did another operation July the 3rd. Um, some of the same people you're, we're dealing with today, we will deal with next time. Uh, I checked court records and found that three of the people arrested in February, uh, their charges were rejected. Uh, we did some research, went back about two and a half years. Everyone arrested for, in these operations, either pled guilty to that crime uh, was referred to diversion or were allowed to plead to a responsive of criminal mischief and pay a fine, but three. 
Uh, those three were uh, handled by Assistant District Attorney Jason Waltman. And those are the only three he dealt with. I've tried to get explanation out of him. I don't know if he just doesn't like these charges, this, this crime. I don't, I don't know what his issue is, but uh, because they looked checked IDs and continued to sell, that wasn't the reason, a reason he gave me. Um, he gave me a bunch of reasons, but again, I don't know what his underlying issue is with this, but again, he's, if I, I can see if any of these go in front of him, he's just gonna reject them. Um, he asked me things like why we don't give warnings and um, we're not including copies of the confidential informants identification in the report, which will become public record, which would not make them confidential anymore. And we're using uh, your daughter or your son or your grandson, you know, and we don't want, we don't want them out there like that. So um, as far as the, the rejected charges, I can't explain it. I just know they're coming from one, one place and uh, we've addressed it. The sheriff's office has addressed it with the DA's office and it's above my pay grade from, from here on out, but just, just so y'all understand, they're not, they're not rejecting them because they're bad cases. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Representative from JRS Saloon. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my name is J.R. Lankford. I own J.R. Saloon. Okay. I've had it uh, 12 years. Uh, the young lady that was accused of uh, selling to a minor has been working for me 12 years. Uh, I have a special situation in this, and I'd like you all to know it. Whether you believe me or not is not important. I, I just want to be able to tell the truth and the whole truth. The young lady came through the door and I was sitting there at the door. I actually checked her ID. She made the remark as she passed by me, I said, I need to see your ID. No one enters my establishment without a valid ID. Under my roof, they get no sale, they don't belong in it, they don't use our bathroom without showing an ID. As she came by me, I said, ma'am, I need to see your ID. She said, oh, you're the doorman. I said, no, ma'am, I'm the owner. I checked her ID, it said June 1996 is what I read. It actually read 1998, and I verified that through a friend of mine who was also checked the same day, okay? The young lady went to the bar. My bartender asked her for her ID. The statement that was made by the officer is not correct. She did ask for her ID. I stated to my bartender, I've already checked her, Pam, it's good. That's why she made the sale. So she made the sale and the bottle was correct. And something that occurred, the, the fact is the young lady was a very attractive young lady and she was dressed in a very nice manner. I had a bar full of my regulars and she was dressed in a manner that was extraordinary for our area. She had everybody's attention. <laughs> she sat down next. <laughs> You know me, Doug, I don't lie. <laughs> Straight up, she sat down next to the register. My bartender delivered the beer. A young man who was sitting next to her was very attentive. We watched her, and I say we because it was myself, my wife, and our two best friends. She was out of place. An attorney walking in and a $1,500 suit couldn't have been more out of place. Everybody was looking at her. She sat there, she drank from the beer twice in front of a camera. We have a statement here from everyone in the bar that night mm -hmm. that signed it that will swear to that. She was witnessed. Now, I don't agree with a police officer sitting behind a billboard sign and running radar. I was a cop 15 years myself. And I don't agree with sting operations being run with Caddo Parish. I'm just stating fact. Plain and simple, it's entrapment. In this case, a minor was sent into the bar without an escort and there was nobody standing on my front porch because I was sitting at the window. So the statement that was given is a lie. Straight up, looking dead in the eye, telling you the truth. That's the way it went down. She drank from the beer, she got up, she started out the door. The boy that was paying so much attention to her said she's leaving a full beer. 
waitress or the bartender, Miss Pam, said she was <coughs> probably just going to answer a call. We watched her walk off the porch and outside. Two minutes later, in walks an officer, and I said, sir, can I help you? He said, you've sold to an underage minor. She had no escort inside that building. I knew every person in that building, and their names are all on this paper. So whatever the fine may be, I'm going to pay it. I'm a business owner. But you needed to know the truth. You need to hear the truth, and that's all I'm saying. Thank you, sir. We have a couple of commissioners on board. I'll Few. make a motion. Commissioner Doug Dominic. First, it's the first offense. Okay, make a motion for first offense. Second. Um, second. Okay, Thank let's move by Commissioner Doug Dominic and second by Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Commissioner Dominic. Has JR been here before, Todd? It's been a while. Okay. A long. So, um, <coughs> they all understand. I just you understand. Our <coughs> that I understand. We're, You've we're got a job to do. We're forced to do a job, and, and you know, I can uh, vouch that. You know that I've been waiting for someone to come here and say the things that you just said. I'm telling you straight up. I don't understand how you send a minor into the bar, knowing that that's the situation. I don't understand how the law says it's okay to break the law to do this. Right. And I don't understand her sitting there and drinking from the beer, knowing she was not to drink the <coughs> alcohol. And we got, <coughs> like I said, I got a signed document. We okay. watched her drink from the beer. That's against the law, too. And if she's an officer of the state, then she broke the law. Shouldn't be able to break the law to sting an operation. That's all I'm saying. Amen. That's all I have. OK. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. You said you were a police officer for how many years? 15 years. Should a police officer be able to speed, to catch a speeder? Only in an emergency. <laughs> Just, I, I, I've always told with that question in my head. Uh, <laughs> Only to a point as well. <laughs> when you're risking public safety, right. that's when you slow your I've down. always I've always toyed with that in my head. Um, uh, I guess this is a Tony Frazier question. Can these, can this, the, can these actions that we're taking being turned over be turned over if they appeal in court or something or are they yes, are they, they, can, they can be appealed to the district court so that y'all can so there is an ability uh yes, i don't sir. see anybody having an attorney down here but yes sir i already talked sorry, to my attorney we have a as lot well of noise. Oh. excuse me excuse me one second we have a lot of noise in the audience I'm we sorry. ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly hush you those babies up, up here Thank hush you. those babies up <laughs> Uh, they just babies. Yeah, they just oh. kids. But no, um, I understand, and so, I, I do intend to appeal. So I, you know, I don't know what I'm not familiar with this process. I tend to vote the pleasure of those yes, commissioners sir. in that area. I don't know. I don't have a clue what we do with ABO. So, um, but I would encourage you to follow the process. Well, I'm through. the only bar owner that can stand here and look at you and tell you I put my father out for no ID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I absolutely. Put my father out of my establishment because he did not have his ID in his pocket. I understand. I don't. I go by the law. Thank you. And I looked at that ID and I misread the date. A six is easy to miss on an eight, especially in a bar where it's not well lit. But we, so I did make that mistake. It's my fault, and yeah. my bartender should not have been punished right. for that. Well, I think you're one of the first ones I've ever seen come down and kind of give a challenge to it. Most folks just go on, but you know, I encourage you to. I stand to, up for what's right. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm guessing. Okay. Commissioner Lee and Carthorne. Thank you, Madam President. I want to have a question to the RJ out of yes, sir. curiosity. You described that your bar has a porch on the front of it? Yes, sir. And, and then you also described that there was a, that uh, and he got Commissioner uh, Dominique to agree with you that you've got a unique crowd that's a part of your bar? Absolutely. Okay. Do, do you mind? describing that unique crowd and any specificity? Sir, I have... I'm only messing with you. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. We have a bar Maybe family. Maybe as, 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 and, and, and there are familiar faces among you. Okay? And many of you have been ID'd in my bar. That is true, too. And I'll tell you this. My mother throws a cussing fit every time I ID her, but she's going to have it on her, and I'm going to see it every time she walks in. This was plainly my mistake. My bartender was punished for it. Our bar family, mm -hmm. there was not a person in that bar that night I do not know personally by name 
The young lady came in, she was a newcomer. There was no escort with her whatsoever. There was no one on my porch. Well, when, you, was, when you described it, I saw a visual, so I yes, just wanted sir. to ask you. <laughs> I'm just telling you yeah, straight up. If I tell you the sun ain't coming up in the morning, you can sleep late. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Madam President. Let's see, Commissioner Carthel. Okay. Please vote. What is the plan? Mm -hmm. uh, we're voting on first offense. Okay. $500. Okay, and that passes 9 0. Thank you, Mr. Lankwit. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Clark, we'll get something to you. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. All right. At this time, we move to new business. Uh, adopt timeline and rules. Move to adopt. Selecting. Second. Okay. See Commissioner Stephen Jackson on the board. Yes, uh, and I meant to call a turn phrase. I've been moving all day. The only question I had was, did you put this process, or did Todd? I did. Todd. Yeah. Actually, it was kind of a combination of all. Three okay, of us. I'm yeah. just I'm just curious if it is. I was just wondering if it was uh, better to do the uh, interviews after. I saw interviews doing before being done before and then I think I saw a vote being done before if it's best to do it regular meetings, yes. right I was wondering if it was possible to do it at a special meeting after we convene since everybody is here that's and would I need an amendment for that or or how would we I'm just no, you, well you can amend it to say that we meet right. after the regular session or after the work session that's y'all's decision to make okay because sometimes it's a little it can be a little difficult to get everybody ahead of time as opposed to after the fact. That was my only. Yes. Thank you. That's it for me for right now. Okay. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Call for the question. Second. Okay. The I'm on board. The question has been called by Commissioner That's Lyndon B. Johnson. Second by the chair. Okay. Please call vote on calling for the question. Okay, and that fails for seven. Thank you. Okay. That's fine. We'll stay here okay. for a while. So that was the substitute people. motion. So now we're voting on the original motion? Yeah, that was, no, that was the, the call the question. The call for the question yeah. fails. So okay. the, go back to the bank. Go back, back to the bank. board. Now, whoever's on the board. I don't have anyone on my board. Okay, Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to respectfully um, make the request that the final vote occur either September 3rd or 5th. I'd like that opportunity between where the candidates make their presentation to be able to vet them from many standpoints, many uh, data points. And uh, I have no problem with it up to that time. It needs to go to September 3rd or 5th uh, for the final vote, and that's it. Thank you. Second. Well, Was that a motion? We need to have a definite date, don't we? I just said. Okay, well, September 5th. I mean, September 5th uh, for the final okay. vote. Okay. That's okay. something I have to change Okay. On. Commissioner right. Stephen Jackson. I like, well, can I make my motion for his? I, I'd like to make my motion to put the interview and vote in a special session after, after upon adjournment. That's my only. Second. Can you explain? Uh, you're losing me. What? I just, whatever date that we decide to do it, I'm just asking if we do it after and not before. Oh, you're talking about did the interview. So we made it 3.30, do it at? Five. Right. right. Whenever we adjourn, if we adjourn at four, three right. thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. Do that's it after the meeting. That's an amendment, mine. I, yes. I'll take it. Thank you. No problem with that. Uh, well, I, I don't know about the date. I'm not attaching mine to the date. Yours is separate. Sep Yours is a yes. separate motion. Would, yeah. Okay. So wait. What I have is that we have a motion on the floor to move the vote yeah. to September fifth. So I need to wait. After. Because, no, no. no, you did a friendly amendment. No, I'm not you. doing a friendly amendment, so I would draw my motion. Then. Okay, then. I'm so not. right now what we have on the floor as a substitute motion is to do the final vote on September 5th. I had a question for that. I motion. didn't hear. I, I, I know that he, he spoke, and then so I didn't know that we had a motion on the floor. I thought that he was just asking. Now, I did hear someone say second, but he didn't say I make a motion. I think he was just having discussion. Am I correct? Because I didn't hear you say that. 
Okay, let me start over. Yes, well, that's yes. what I didn't do. I didn't okay. do Okay, so we don't have a motion on the floor. No, we do. Yeah, man. Yeah. No. Listen. I, I want to withdraw this point. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Lynn. Mr. Well, Mr. Lynn, if that's the case, case. Can I get back that's on the case, board? then Stephen is still on the board right. and he can make his motion. So I like to make a motion. Okay, I'm sorry. gentlemen, listen. I have Commissioner Stephen Jackson on the board right now, and the only motion that we have on the floor is the one that Commissioner Jackson made, which was to change the time from the beginning of the meeting until the end of the meeting. Correct. So that's the only motion I have on the floor at this time, and that was that motion was made by Commissioner Stephen Jackson, and that was seconded by Commissioner Matthew Lynn. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, that's you still have me. the floor. That's it for me. That's all I want. Okay. Thank you. We Commissioner Doug Dominic. Yeah, I would like to make a motion that the final vote be held on September 5th. Okay. Okay, and that dies for a lack of second. A second. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I was sorry. thinking it was a friendly. Wait, he yes. already had a motion, and I was thinking it was a friendly amendment. I'm sorry. Get back on the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, based upon the, the outline that we have in front of us, it's a timely outline. Um, I guess Todd or Donna, whoever put it together, took time to put it together. And I mean, to, to see that you want to vet somebody, I mean, what you gonna do, background checks on them? Or, I mean, I don't understand what, what you're gonna do other than what we're gonna have in interviews. You're gonna call people and and have them to do this, have them to do that, snoop around, witch hunt. I mean, I don't quite <laughs> understand what's going on after we do an interview, it's the interview. Uh, so why would it take another about three weeks, two, two and a half weeks, to actually say, well, we're ready to vote now, other than to actually do some background checks and making somebody do this and do that. I, I just don't think that that's our place to do that. Our place is to ask the questions that are prevalent for the position. <clears throat> and once we make those ask those questions, we get an answer. We can then sit sit in your head about is this the right candidate for the position. It doesn't take all that extra time to figure out um, that we need to vote on who who needs to be the uh, register of voters. Uh, so uh, I just I have this loss about why we need to to delay it uh, other than to to do stuff like that. And if y'all can change my mind on it, then I wish somebody would tell me why we need to delay it other than to do more witch hunting on an individual. Instead of asking them questions out here in the public, you want to do stuff behind the scene and find out little nits, bits about a person, you know, anything that you can find out about them from the time that they were born until now. So, I mean, ask the questions here and formulate whether you want to hire the person or not instead of all that witch hunting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. We have Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I am not viewing it um, as a negative, and um, I'm not viewing it necessarily as a witch hunt, but um, the process um, as written, first of all, identifies that only qualified candidates will be um, interviewed to begin with. So the fact that we are interviewing this candidate means, number one, that they are qualified and have met those uh, particular qualifications. And then beyond the qualifications, we then have an opportunity to interview them. And the interview, as I appreciate it, means it gives them an opportunity to come before the body and whatever questions we derive that's necessary in order to um, determine the suitability of this person, whether or not they are a good candidate or a bad candidate or whatever. I think that is the overall purpose of the interview itself and then the determination to be made after that. So uh, in that respect, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think I share the sentiments of Commissioner Johnson um, as it relates to what more can we get other than the fact that the candidate is qualified. And then whatever information, and I would uh, encourage my fellow commissioners to make sure that whatever you need to know of the candidates, that that's included in the interview. I'm sure we can work together on that. But after the interview is done, I too am curious, or I too do not understand what more would we get or what more would we seek um, beyond that. And after getting that information, I would support it uh, at that point because right now I don't understand that either. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Matthew Lynn. Um, a motion to move the August 19th date to September the 5th, along with all of the things that uh, Commissioner Jackson had made a motion on in reference to it being after our meeting. That's the, the motion to September the 5th. And if I can get a second on that, I'll interviews? explain why. For the interview? For the interview? For the or interviews. About the, the vote? For the interview. Well, for the, so when would for be the, the vote? Well, well, what, you know, when the vote is going to be then? The vote, the vote would be the week after that or two weeks after that. I'll second. That's Thank prolonging you. it even longer. And so, and so with that, what we have is we're not, we're not doing a rush job that we've got everybody's name in, legal has plenty of time to do their research, and then we have plenty of time to individually look at each single person who is, who is wanting to be this, the, this lifelong position. I think that this is, a, this is an extremely important job, the appointment is for life, and that no, I'm not looking to do a rush job. I'm, I'm looking to take my time with each individual resume that comes in. We don't know how many it's gonna be. If it's five, yes, we could probably do it quicker, but it might not be five, it might be 50. And if it's 50, I wanna be able to look at each and every single person and give each and every single person the opportunity that they deserve. Um, I don't wanna just say, okay, these three, when, when there's somebody who is that has demography skills, legal skills, and um, accounting skills. And if we have 10 people that have these three skills that I'm gonna be looking for that were recommended by the previous mm -hmm. register of voters, then, then it's really gonna take some fine tuning for me to, to listen after I have read their resume and checked research. And I mean, I'm curious about their, their voting record as well um, and so I hope whoever is applying to be register a voter has a, has at least participated in the process um, I'm I'm not looking for a witch hunt but I'm definitely not looking for a rush job and since we don't know what we're going into with this I think that we should err on the side of giving more time then all of a sudden we have all these names in front of us and we don't have the time to give each one of them the respect and the time that each one of them deserve in being appointed in this position. And so I ask that we hold them until September the 5th and then do the interviews, the meeting after that, afterwards, after our meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lynn. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you, ma'am. Um, it's not a witch hunt, it's a hunt for a register of voters, I think it is, that's how we do it, and we need to bet this. It's some of the reasons that the people have said here, not necessarily the ones that have said we don't need to delay. Uh, I think we're good until October 15th, because July 15th is uh, when Mr. Robertson tendered his resignation, and so that gives us essentially 90 days from there, which would be around October 15th, so why rush it that much? I think this is a very important position. We do need to bet them and uh, whoever the candidates are. And again, we don't know if it's gonna be five or, or 15 or what. So I just think we need the extra time. I don't mind having the interviews on August 20, the, the original date for the interviews, August the 19, but uh, I don't want to rush the vote on it until we have an opportunity to check all this out. Uh, I just think it's fair to the position, fair to the position, and let me say it one more time, fair to the position of registrar voters to make sure we get the right person. Why rush it? We're good at October 15th, and uh, I'll take any kind of delay, but I just think September 3 and 5th, and it may be too early to vote. We need the extra time, and that's where I'm at on it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Middleton. Vice President Chavez. Thanks, President. Uh, I'm going to support the September the, the 5th or, or any later date uh, that you guys stayed out. I had a, uh, a, a mentor of mine, uh, something that stays with me day after day, is uh, he always said, act in haste, repent in leisure. Act in haste, repent in leisure. So this is going to be one of the most important board appointments we'll ever make in our commission career and one of the most important positions that we're going to place somebody in for Caddo Parish. I think we owe it to these citizens to do the great due diligence of vetting every single person. And like Commissioner Lynn said, we may end up with 100 different people 
we can't effectively vet all those people uh, within a month. So I'm for moving it along so that we can have enough time to do a good job. That's all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, President. Okay. Commissioner Lee and Carthorn. Uh, thank you, Madam President. As I <coughs> hear the conversation around this uh, horseshoe, it looks as though we are, uh, I guess we're not saying it verbally, we need a process by which we can fit everyone on a fair and equal basis. Is there the possibility of um, Attorney Frazier creating a metrics that or that we can decide on and say, like he talked about accounting, he talked about this background, and maybe even with the help of, of uh, human resources, to establish a uh, criterion by which we're going to judge each candidate. So when you got a pool of candidates, you sit down, you got your matrix, you interview the, the person, you check them off, give them a grade, then you go to the next person. What I'm, what I'm a little concerned about, and I say concerned about, does it take another 18 days to, I, if we do a metric, does it take another 18 days to vet everybody individually? And are there going to be some vetting outside of what we put on a matrix to determine who's the registrar? And so maybe I'm posing that to the author of the, uh, the amendment. I, I would just be curious, after the interview process on the 19th, that's an additional 18 days of vetting, of going through. What will we be combing through through that period of time to narrow down a selection as it relates to the new registrar? Can you ask that question, Mary Are you using that you know, to, are you asking the maker of the motion or are you asking the target? Well, yeah, I mean, I would offer that to my fellow commissioners who are in favor of this motion. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily say that it's a bad idea. I just want a little understanding as to in this 18-day period of time, if we had a matrix and we judging everybody on the day they're interviewed, then what is that's additional that needs to be uh, researched or, or, or conjured up with to decide who's the who, who your vote is going to go for? May I answer that? Um, yeah. No. If, if, if Madam President, I'd like to to make an emotion. Okay. You know, things float around. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Things float around in the community. And if uh, we don't have any place in here for citizen comments or citizen review, and it allows people in your district say, hey, I know this about this person, and that gives us plenty of time to bet it out because I want to get down to the you know, nitty gritty. Is it true or false? And then we don't want it to be a negative person coming in, a person who has a negative background. Uh, that's coming into the position. That's this is very important. It's not like the MPC and all the others, the fire districts. I mean, we have recurring appointments we have to do out there, but this is a one and final time, as Commissioner Chavez said, uh, we're good to October 15th. What's the hurry? What's the rush? Where's the fire? I think we just need to slow it down. I'm okay with our August 19 interviews, but how about just giving me, to, giving us ourselves until uh, September the, um, how do we meet on the 9th or on the 3rd of September? September 3rd and 5th. Third work and fifth. session's on the 3rd. Let's see. Let me see. Work session will be the 3rd and the regular session will be the 5th. Okay. Uh, September 3rd. I mean, that's good with me. I mean, that cuts it down to two days. I think it makes it like 13 days or something of that nature. It's a real short time. It gives a little opportunity. Again, there's no rush here. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned if, if, it, if it takes three days or it takes 90 days. What I'm trying to ascertain is what is it that we need to know individually in the form of a matrix, everybody that applies for the job, how do we go down the list and say, I want to know this about this person, this about this. Do you want to do background checks in advance of people that are applying? Yes, I'm good with that. And make that a part of the matrix? Yes. yes. Well, how, do we, how do we incorporate that entire phrase? Um, or can we do that? There would be something that, um, that actually has they would give permission for on their application. Um, what I would suggest maybe as the compromise commissioners is if you adopt the timeline as it currently is up to the 14th and then on your August 19th meeting, once you see how many candidates you have that you are going to actually have to interview, on the 19th you set the date or have the president call the special meeting for the interviews at that time. I mean, that way if you need more than one day to special interview. Special meeting for the interview or for the vote? 
for the and I think you had special special you had special sessions on here for interviews and special sessions for votes on your timeline. So, but at least if you need more than one afternoon to interview all candidates, you will know that at that time you will have an idea of how many qualified candidates you have. So you're saying wait until we uh, set the final vote until after August, at August 19th we would decide when the final vote is. That August 19th you would decide how many days, which day or days the August interviews 14. are going to take place as well as the final vote. But we would have the, we'd have the interviews on August 19th. Well, no, they, what I'm saying now is don't set your interviews for August 19th. Okay. Because if you On set August that, 19th we decide when we're going to interview and then we can decide when our final vote is going to be based upon that. Correct, because okay. you will you will find out how many qualified candidates you have or be okay. advised on August 12th or 13th. Okay. Is it my motion that's on the floor? You never made a motion. I yield, uh, Madam President. Okay. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. So from what I heard through the talking around the horseshoe after I made my initial comments is I'm still just as lost as I was when I made my first motion. I mean my first, first comments. Because I've heard moving the date back, but the interviews were supposed to start on August 19th. They say moving those back to September the 5th or whatever. So between August 14th and September, what are we gonna do when we don't even have the list in front of us of who's gonna be interviewed and how many it is officially? Mm -hmm. So between the 14th and September, that means somebody's gonna go out and do some investigative information on that particular person. I tell my friend the motion that's on the floor, the substitute motion. Not what you propose, but the substitute motion. Okay. So in between that time, now you're gonna be going around talking to people, find out what this person is, what that person do, all that, doing some background checks, and then still vote. So it's an unofficial, um, I guess you can say, interview that you're gonna be performing on these individuals and then come back and then do the vote based upon timeline that I just heard from the uh, substitute motion. Now, what makes sense is if we do on the 19th, say we got five candidates, we can do five candidates between August 19th and 22nd. If we end up with, say, 100, then we need to modify that or we need to stay here and work this out. We might have to be here at 10, 11 o'clock. This is what we get paid for. You know, so I don't want to just come here and push a button, but this is what we get paid for. Am I right or wrong? So, I, I, no, I'm, I'm right on this one. You're right. Yeah. So, so if we had 100 candidates, we are supposed to be able to get them all in, vet them all the same way. Not vet some this way mm -hmm. and vet some this other way, or vet some a third way. Vet them all the same way. Whether it's five or where's the hundred. We don't have, to, it just means that we gotta stay here a little longer and get the job done. Can't make it convenient for everybody. Now, we start pushing the date back. The person who's gonna get the job, he's gonna have an election coming up in October. So don't you think that they might wanna have a little bit more time to get prepared for the election? Then to be, okay, it's September, now election next month. And I'm just finding out where all the bathrooms at. <laughs> right or wrong? I'm wrong. just saying. Wrong. wrong. I mean, it's, there's an interim. It, there is an interim now, but this person is now going to be the one that's going to be selected to, to be the boss. So the interim now will not be the interim once we make that decision. So that person would need to know what's going on within his own department, his own facility. <coughs> so why would you not give them the opportunity to have more time than and have less time and put the convenience on us as opposed to them? Come on. <coughs> I'm done, Madam President. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the recommendation of the parish attorney, which would a second. adopt a schedule up to August 14th. 19th. August, August the. Um, August 14th. August the. 19th. 12th and 13th was when the attorneys would take a look and see how many qualified candidates you have. And then you come back on either August 19th after your work session or on the 22nd. But they can still do the 14th, right? 
You right. still notice well, notify candidates on the 14th, right? Yeah. Well, no, because you don't have you haven't set your interview date yet by the 14th. The, part, the the suggestion was to come back after you. She said on August 19th, come back and we will set the interview after you dates at that time. You have, then set the date at one of those next two meetings. So, Stephen, August 19th, we would meet to set the interview dates, and we'd also be able to set, we would know how many applications we're going to have. We would be able to set the final date, that's what she was saying. And I was going to second, but I think your motion was second. One second. Commissioner Johnson, you said you had them. I'm sorry. I said I have a neighborhood meeting I've got to attend. Okay. And i got to get to the gym. Okay. So, somebody going to call. Lion King come out tonight. Right. He's second. Okay. I gotta get to the line. So the motion is on the floor. And I second. And that was second by Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Okay. We still have commissioners on yeah, the board. Yeah. Nobody's right. called for the question. Yeah, we got two. Yeah, okay. Got Commissioner Jackson, were you done? Yes. Uh, well, well, I just uh, uh -oh. just to for, cl for clarity, uh, I can see both sides. Where one, I I do agree that I don't want this to turn into a circus where we have all of this time where we where folks information is being put out that has absolutely nothing to do with the job we know we know how things get and uh, i was talking to somebody in the elevator in the elevator as i was going to check on what was going on with my bag and folks <coughs> were saying i don't know how y'all do it public <coughs> stuff because folks are always in your business about nothing that has to do with what you do so I I, I, under, I totally get that and I think that the onus is on us as a body to make sure that that does not happen uh, and I hope that there are not people who are promoting that because I for some reason there seems to be some leakage in emails around here where things come to us and before we, before the crystal can put out a press release, is already on a blog, and so there's some legitimacy to that. If we're talking about getting the best and brightest and the right people for this particular position, they don't want to be subjected to foolishness because this is not a political job that we're appointing. This is a non-political job that we're appointing. So the witch hunt, we should do our best to curtail that. <coughs> but at the same time, I understand. Folks want to take the time to, to vet some things. I just don't think that a month to vet four or five applications. But then again, there may be 50. There may be 100. I don't know. So that's why I'm supporting the recommendation that was made so we can move forward and uh, the Lion King premiere comes out tonight. So. Okay. Commissioner Dominic. Yeah, I just wanted to, to clarify, make sure I understand the motion correctly and then have everything. So the the motion will be that on our work session on August 19th, at that point, we will set a date for the interviews and we will also set a date to have the final vote. Yeah. That's Correct. What, that's yes. What, all right. and, and, I, and I think that's a good thing. I okay. think that some of the st okay. stuff that Commissioner Jackson said, I don't think we're looking out for a witch hunt. Right. I think that we have to understand, and I would say I've been here 12 years or almost 13 years. This is probably the most important vote as far as appointing someone that we will ever have. I think Commissioner Lynn said it, this is a lifelong mm -hmm. appointment. It is extremely, extremely important, extremely important, important um, vote that we'll make that will affect the, you know, the, the voters, the registered voters, and the job that that person does. And we need to make sure we get the most and best qualified person to represent. Mm -hmm. Our parish on that issue so um, I'll be supporting Commissioner Stephen Jackson's motion which is basically recommended by our lawyer or legal staff and I think that's the thing to do okay Commissioner John Atkins I'll be supporting the motion that was proposed by the parish attorney that's all I have to say thank you okay Commissioner Mike Middleton call for the question okay second second no one else is on the board. I don't know. <laughs> Turned out that way. <laughs> Could have been. So we got okay. one motion. We, we vote on the got first two. motion, and we vote on the Jackson motion. Yes. First, we got oh, we're calling for the first. We're voting on calling for the oh, question. Oh. Oh. Last motion first. Two motions. Okay. 
Is there two motions on the floor? Mm -hmm. yeah. You had two one substitute. and you had a substitute. So yeah. if the question is called, you vote on the last one first and then. Okay. Right. This call for the question, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're ready to vote. vote. Okay. <laughs> okay. The question has been called, passes yeah. seven to zero. Now we're voting on the substitute Point of order. motion Let first. Mr. Hopkins, will you read what we're voting on? We're voting to accept the timeline from up until the point of August 12th and 13th. Then on the 14th, the, uh, the, the on the 19th, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the commission will, in its work session, decide when the interviews will be held and when final vote. Thank you, Madam President. Thank Select. you, Mr. Hopkins. Okay, please vote. This special meeting went yeah. way too long. Chavez. Thank you. That was. No, you don't matter. You saw it. I did, yeah. It's all right. Go ahead. All right. Okay, Second. All right. Second. All right. Damn, it's the longest special meeting. And this one been a special meeting. Well, I said it's the longest special meeting.